Hey YouTube, it's Icy, and welcome to the 171st episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Alright, so to start off, I want to discuss jailbreaking for a second. So following my recent series of iOS 7.0.4 jailbreak tutorials using the RageBreak utility for the iPhone 4, developer RageMaster pushed out an updated tool for Windows to include not only a more streamlined GUI or graphical user interface, but also a simplified method for jailbreaking and an auto-install process for Cydia. Now, as I've said numerous times before, both in my jailbreak tutorials and best tech info and rumors, RageBreak is based on Windows CM's Open Snow Jailbreak, which utilizes GeoHot's old and now outdated LimeRain exploit from 2010. And due to the nature of said exploit, which is based on a boot ROM vulnerability, Apple has since patched it with the release of A5 based devices. Fortunately though, it has functioned on A4 chips for the lifetime of the devices. Although the last device that's still supported in Apple's iOS 7 firmware is of course the iPhone 4. So again, that's why the only device of any kind that RageBreak functions with is the iPhone 4. But now it would support other A4 devices, but with the release of new firmwares, Apple has phased them out. Now recently someone asked me, well why haven't they released another boot ROM jailbreak for all devices? Now that's a very good question and essentially that's because there simply isn't a boot ROM exploit like LimeRain. No one really has discovered one yet. Previously POSIX Ninja did say that he had a boot ROM exploit for A5 based devices but that was quite some time ago and it looks like it hasn't quite panned out. So as of now it doesn't seem like there's a boot ROM jailbreak in development and it's quite unlikely. And for those of you who aren't aware, again the reason why a boot ROM jailbreak is so great is because it will function on the devices that it supports for their entire lifetime until Apple stops supporting them, meaning that the developers can simply update jailbreak tools to support new firmwares immediately upon their release. Like I said before though, the jailbreak that the evaders are currently working on is not a boot ROM jailbreak. It will be an untethered jailbreak, which is the most favorable type to those who are new on the jailbreak scene. Essentially, it means that you can reboot your device without the assistance of a computer and running a portion of the jailbreak utility to get it to boot back up into its jailbroken state. You can simply reboot it at will. And like I've been saying before, as far as the status of that jailbreak is concerned, the evaders are working diligently on it, and they're actually working in somewhat of a stealth mode to keep various leaks from happening, setbacks. They also aren't giving any sort of release information because unforeseen complications may still propagate causing the time frame to be pushed back. Of course I will keep you guys completely updated on the status of any future jailbreak utilities here on my YouTube channel and actually I started to get somewhat sidetracked talking about boot ROM jailbreaks and the upcoming untethered jailbreak. What I mostly wanted to mention in this episode as far as jailbreaking is concerned is that again RageMaster pushed out an updated version of his jailbreak utility based on Windows CM's Open Snow project that again can jailbreak the iPhone 4 on iOS 7.0.4. The process is now much easier than it ever was before and it's more automated than it ever was before as well. So it's easier for the end user and it's just overall a better experience. If you're interested and you have yet to watch my jailbreak tutorial, just be sure to do so. I'll have a link to that down below in the more info as well as a link to my written guide. Now moving on, I want to discuss the highly rumored and long awaited Mac Pro. In last week's episode, some details that I went over revealed that the desktop computer was on track to be released as soon as December 16th. That didn't quite happen. That was actually released a few days later on Thursday, December 19th, and it's now starting at $2,999. However, if you were to go to their website right now and try to order one of the new Mac Pros, unfortunately you wouldn't really be able to do so because the website states that computers won't ship until February. And I've actually been doing some calling to various Apple stores myself and it looks like nobody has stock and it also looks like they have no clue when they'll start to receive stock in stores. We are told though that some lucky individuals who went to order it early enough on the 19th were able to do so and receive shipping dates earlier than February. And of course, if you guys want more details on the Mac Pro, just be sure to visit Apple's site. All right, next up, I want to discuss something I found somewhat interesting. Now recently, as some of you who follow me on Instagram may already know, I did purchase a new Nexus 5 smartphone, which I've actually been using quite a bit lately. I've paired it with T-Mobile's $30 unlimited data plan and unlimited tech texting plan. It's been working quite well for me. I mainly use it for tethering and also for on the go things when my iPhone dies or when it's running low on battery, but that's not really what I wanted to focus on. So the Nexus 5 was released last month in November. Since then, there's been a December revision that includes new speaker and microphone grills on the bottom. They're actually enlarged and also better buttons. They're seated correctly now, so they don't have as much wobble and play when you're actually pushing them. 
Well, I just recently ordered this actually a few days ago, and it appears as though this is still the old version of the Nexus 5. And I did some calling around, and I also contacted some people at Google, and it appears as though the company is still selling the old device models. I couldn't get anyone to confirm whether or not they're still producing the old models, but considering that Nexus 5 stock fluctuates greatly on the Google device play store, it's definitely likely that some of the company's Google and LG contract to do their manufacturing are still producing a few of the old Nexus 5 five models. Now I just wanted to say that I found that quite interesting, especially since I couldn't get mine replaced for a new one. I also wanted to do somewhat of a mini review in this video for the Nexus 5 like I did in last week's episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors with the Hisense 4K TV that I detailed. So for those of you who don't know, the Nexus 5 is Google's latest handset in their Nexus lineup. It features a glass and somewhat of a soft touch plastic design on the back. It has a five inch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. It has a quad core processor and it's running the latest version of Android 4.4 KitKat. It's also kind of in a sense what some people refer to as the iPhone of Android here and it's Google's take on an Android phone. So it's not bogged down by anything like Samsung's TouchWiz or the overlays that LG and other companies like HTC use. The device starts at $349 for a 16 gigabyte version and it goes up to $399 for a 32 gig model on Google's site. It's also unlocked and it supports a wide range of LTE bands. It's really quite a great phone. I don't think you'd be able to find any phone off contract for such a great price. And when paired with T-Mobile's unlimited data and unlimited texting plan like I have mine set up with, you really can't go wrong, especially since you can use things like Talkatone in conjunction with Google Voice to get unlimited calling as well. And it even features something that I find awesome and scary at the same time. When you're at the home screen with it unlocked, you can say, okay, Google, and it will bring up the search screen. Now, of course, that means it's listening to everything you're saying when you're at the home screen. It's not quite as frightening as the Moto X though because that really is listening to everything you're saying. Now, of course, they claim that phones that do that and that have that listening capability store that information and process it locally on a portion of the CPU, but you know there are gonna be people who simply question Google's ethics on the topic. So in summary, the Nexus 5 is a really great phone and I definitely recommend it to anyone who's looking to get a cheap, great phone off contract. All right, and finally, in this episode, Episode, I just wanted to discuss a few giveaways. So we are concluding our second generation iPad mini giveaway on free app life and we are planning on holding some really awesome holiday giveaways too. So if you have yet to do so, just be sure to go to free app life on your iDevice sign up for an account, download the Activate app, open it once, and you'll be good to go. Also, for those of you who are new to the service, once you sign up, you can download sponsored applications, earn points, and redeem points for various prizes and gift cards. And also, as far as my own $100 Amazon gift card giveaway is concerned, that is concluding soon, so if you have yet to enter, just be sure to do so by rating this video up, hitting that subscribe button, be notified every time I release new videos, and leaving a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Once your comments have been posted, you'll be automatically entered to win. And if you don't know what to leave in the comment section, try answering the question of the day. What do you guys think about the Nexus 5 and how do you think it compares with Apple's iPhone 5S? And if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos and jailbreak updates, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me one of your circles inside of Google+, and follow me on Instagram at ICUID. Links to everything down below. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.